want your profit and loss to look like. Yeah. You know, that was very um, important to me that don't just worry about the next sale, treat it like a business, set your goals, set your quarterly goals, your yearly goals, and hit it as a business, run it like a business, even if it's just you wearing all the hats. Yeah. So that was my quick nugget that I also wrote down too. Thank you, Kara. And, and it's true. We are the business. She writes about that. We are the business. Uh, in, in her marketing book that I showed, she talks about, you know, she's the CEO, that she's not only the CEO, she's a custodian. She's she, the, the admin. She is, you are everything. You have a business. You might not think of it because it's easy not to. Um, and you don't need a room. You don't need an office. You don't need a place. You are in business and you do have to run it for business. I know when I do, when, when I do plans with new agents, one of the things I, I try to do, and when I teach Tom Ferry principles, we look at budgets. You have to know how much money you can spend in your business, it, it, but you have to know how much you have to spend and how much are you going to take from what you make if you're making anything. So budgeting is a huge part of it. Taking making sure that you're serious about the business. Now, one thing that uh, I want I want to remind you of that she talked about that gets lost so often, and it's easy to get lost. Steve Morris of Exit, of course, pushes affirmations, the importance of the subconscious, the importance in writing uh, affirmations, and those affirmations, as you write them, as you say them aloud, uh, go into your subconscious because your subconscious does, doesn't know what's true and what's not true. The subconscious believes whatever we tell it. And so we need to tell our subconscious, we need to tell ourselves that I am powerful, I am strong, I am successful. You may feel that you're not successful. You might think you're a total dud. You may not have any business yet, but you want to embrace the positive and one of the things is with affirmations that she talked about and gratitudes. So Mike, when you go out to read, maybe one of the things also to do is to write down what you're thankful for. Those things that you're thankful for every single day, because those, those are the things that are important of our life. That's, that's what we need to uh, need to understand. And when we're grateful for things, we're able to allow more into our life. So grateful, writing down gratitudes was is hugely important to Sherry. She's not the end all of everything in, in the world, but you might con you have consumed that and, and take that in. Um, and then going back to the four people, the mentor, the visionary, the coach and accountability partner. Did anyone give thought to any one of those four and how you might include one or all into your life and in your business and how you can use somebody. Don't want to spend too much time on this, but this is so hugely important. Anybody think about that? Just wait a couple more seconds. Okay. I, I, do, I do affirmations. I've always done affirmations. Um, so that is what builds my confidence. I've been doing affirmations for about 12 years now. So yeah. that is the first thing I do is write them down. I have a notebook for them and I just do like 10 a day. Nothing yeah. crazy. Yeah. Just say, repeat it maybe three times my 10 and then I move on to the next thing. Yeah. So you're on the Steve Morris, the founder of our company. You're, you're on his, uh, his mindset, the things that he does, the affirmations. He believes so much in it. I, I'm going to repeat maybe something I mentioned before, but he created a place for us to be able to work on our affirmations and makes it so easy for us to do affirmations every day that he created a free app that you can go to. It's called prompter.ca. If you go to prompter.ca, because it's Canadian, prompter, P-R-O-M-P-T-E-R, prompter. What will happen is each day you will be sent, sent to you affirmations that are selected for you. So you don't have even have to write them. I get writer's cramp. I got arthritis. I, it's hard for me to write, but it's perfect because they're done for me. I can type, I can, I can look at it. 
but prompt or CA. So if you want to get into affirmations, Steve Morris created something for you and the world. And I just find few agents even use it. Just go to it. Just give it a try. Just learn from that. So how, do, how about um, accountability partners, coaches, or visionaries, or mentors? Do you all know where to look? Let's look at our screen. Everybody that's on here. There's, there is an accountability partner. There is a coach. There's a visionary. We have all the pieces. We have a visionary sitting in his office, which is our broker owner, Paul. Okay, he was a visionary. He bought two franchises. He has a vision for the company. He's trying to take the company and continually trying to shape it to the best of his ability and with the help of other people, accountability partners, Paul, I, I would guess that maybe Mike and I serve as. You're kind of an accountability partner as well. I know that I don't want to screw up when I'm working with things for you, you're, so you keep me accountable. So I've got an accountability count, uh, person. I've had a coach, you know, for seven years, I believe, with the Tom Ferry organization. Every day, um, I worked on things that my coach set forth. Um, mentor as well. I always have a mentor. How about you guys? Who in this group would uh, has a an accountability partner or a mentor? or a coach, or a visionary. Anybody have any of those things? I, I'd love to hear if you have one, all four, part of, or two of the four. What do you guys do? Do you have somebody that you can connect with and work with? Yes, I have an accountability partner. Um, she's also a realtor, but she's at another firm, and she's been staying on top of me on my checklist, and Every week I give her things that I would like to get done personally and through real estate. So she's been good. I've actually been looking for a coach and a mentor. I do have a visionary. Um, so I do have two of the four and I'm still looking for a coach and a mentor. Okay. So your accountability partner, Kara, what's her name? I'm curious. Her name is Desiree Broden. Okay. Desiree. Okay. Yes. And what company? I, I don't want you to give it if, if it's private. I, th I think it's, it's called, I think it's called Brayburn. I think I'm not sure, but she switched three. She was first with EXP when she first started her real estate business three years ago. And then okay. she went to TD Realty. Um, okay. And then now she's with, uh, I think it's Brayburn, but don't quote me on that. But I okay. think that's what it's called. It's a small new one. Okay. So Kara, you have uh, an accountability partner also a realtor, and not even at exit. And that may be best. There are ideas that you can change with each other that she might have that you do. Um, there's no necessary expectations of any performance within the company. So that is a great accountability partner. You have uh, an idea of what's going on over here as opposed to inside your box somebody that's outside yes. of it. Great accountability partner to have. And you touch, you touch each other every week. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, Sunday. Every, okay. Uh, Sunday, should you say? Mm -hmm. Okay. So every Sunday, you know that you are accountable to each other and that you're going to talk to each other to help each other in business. Fantastic. Yes. We all need an accountability partner, whether it's an accountability partner coach, whether it's another agent, whoever it is, you need an accountability partner. Mike, who do you have for an account? Do you have one? Um, I talked to Lance from, uh, he was our owner broker. Well, I was the broker then, but now he's the, he's always been the owner, <laughs> but we talk a couple times a week. Um, and sometimes it's just helpful just to, it may not be necessarily, you know, going over, did you do this or this? Sometimes it's just venting sessions between each other yeah. or like, Hey, I had this happen today. I was frustrated, you know, anything mm -hmm. like that. It's, it's really, you know, we become very transparent and very easy to talk to one another. So it's great. great. Been so, great. And, and, and for me, one of the things I promised my wife when I went into my retail business and my real estate business is I promise I'm not going to bring it home. I'm not going to bring it this stuff. Mike, it's hard for you because you, you know, your wife's a realtor. She's a licensed realtor in, in New Mexico and, and so forth. But I promised in my family, I promise I will not talk about real estate or bring it home. And so I needed somebody 
to talk to because I couldn't, and I promised my wife, I wouldn't bring it home. So our lives would be our lives around our, our children and what was important to us. So that's another need for an account. You need someone to be able to, to talk through things. Anybody else have somebody like that in their life? And Jim, I'll, I'll pitch in. Um, I have I have been coached my whole career in real estate, and I am a real estate coach in the commercial arena. And all of my top performers are coached generally by multiple people. And when I break my life down into the three or four categories that are most important to me, I have accountability partners and coach in each of those areas. And and I also have an accountability partner to a degree with, with these coaches, but I also hold myself as my own accountability partner with the things that I've written out and, and I compare on a regular basis. Um, I, I, find, I find it's interesting that uh, there's a misperception that as you get better, you have less need of a coach, but I promise you, you look around you, Tom Brady still gets coached. Sure. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, I, again, I take, and I, I always find that that by having someone that that uh, has more experience or more depth, uh, it's amazing how much faster you can progress in the nominal cost of coaching. And I want to put that in perspective. I, I've spent probably anywhere from twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a year on coaching, mm -hmm. uh, and I view that as such a great investment uh, because if if I can't do one extra deal because of it, I have the wrong coach. Yes. Or in my music studies, if I have a you know accelerated a certain degree so um and and i i think we're we're blessed in this company because we have talent you, jim here on this call is a professional coach and and uh, what he's doing right now is coaching you all whether you realize it or not um and one of the things we've talked about as a company guys is maybe even taking this up a notch on a select basis for those that really really do want to commit to their success so anyways i'll, I'll let that thought yeah. flow here but but anyways thank you jim for doing this yes yes paul anyone else yeah I'll, i've also got a well, oh, go ahead I... go ahead i already got to speak no, no. <laughs> I, I also have someone i consider a mentor that um he, he's actually my biggest client i've ever had in the business in new mexico and uh, he's bought a lot of commercial property but i go you know when i'm there we have lunch you know i go hang out at his house um we talk on the phone at least once a week, um, but he's very successful and he always has the best advice. And um, my wife used to kind of joke with me and give me a hard time because I'd be having lunch, coffee or a beer with these 80 year old guys. And, <laughs> and I would just hang out with them and just, you know, absorb everything that I can, but Joe in particular. So um, Mike, you've got Joe. So, but I'm guessing you're selling yourself short because he might be 80 years old, but I'm guessing you bring something to the table as well for him. Uh, I, I mean, I do as far as, you know, he had never bought commercial property in his life. He was, you know, he had residential rentals. And so yeah. um, he counts on me a lot. Don't shortchange yourself. Yeah. It's, it's a, you know, it's uh, the mutual admiration society is what I call mm -hmm. it. You right. You you want yeah. you you want to love on each other. You want to give to each other. Uh, you want to take what you can uh, from the people that you're around honorably and so forth. Kim, did you have something you wanted to say? Somebody was. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So I'm, I've been working with you. You know, and a lot of it was when I came on to exit last October. I think you and I kind of started talking. I had a question one day in like October, November. So it was pretty early on. Yeah. And then, I'll, you know, I asked you a question and I said something in that training or, or just in the session or whatever. And we decided we'd meet in two weeks. I looked forward and we need to get back to it because I know I kind of got a little off track with some of the stuff. But it was every two weeks at this time with you that I looked forward to because not only were you my accountability partner, you were my coach, you were my mentor and you were someone that I look up to. And the advice that you give is amazing. And then if I don't have you, and I always have Paul, but if I don't have you, I know I have Mike. Just like yesterday, you didn't answer the phone, so I just talked to Mike. Right. Mm -hmm. With what we have here in, in our offices, in our family that we have, I think is amazing because if I don't have you and if I don't have Mike, then we, all, we actually have other agents um, 
Tom and I meet up mm -hmm. and, you know, he has a list of stuff that he wants to do. Well, the other day I called him and I said, Hey, how'd you do this? He goes, what you're asking me a question, <laughs> but yeah. it, it, we all give back. We all give, you know, something and we, just like what you just said to Mike, don't shortchange yourself because I might be training with you or I might be asking Mike a question, but I think I also still have something to do too. And it, I'm here also. Of course. So. I, I got to tell you, when, when we talk, um, which isn't often enough and on a schedule that it should be, but when we do talk, don't think that I don't learn stuff from you. You've given me names of people. You've given me ideas uh, of things that you're doing that help me as well. So it's not a one way. It never is a one way street. Um, mm. It never has been. It never will be. So what I would encourage you here, just look at the screen and you're I, I don't know if you're all able to cursor over the picture of the people that are here. You know, Cortez, me, Jerry, Tony, Mike, Kim, Henry, Paul. Haley, L, Kara, and for whomever will watch the recording, find somebody here to connect with if you haven't. Pick up the phone and just call Jerry or just call Cortez or call Kara or L. It, reach out to somebody. And if, if the first thing is, you know, to, to talk about what have you done? Where have you been? What do you want to do? And how can we help each other in the business? Um, so it's so powerful and I don't want, you know, I'll leave it, but the mentor, the visionary, the coach, the accountability partner is so important in everything that we do. So thank you so much, you guys for, quick, yeah, quick, go ahead, Kara. Quick question, Jeff. Okay. So you're saying, since I'm brand new with this, I'm, I've only had my license since July. So I, this yeah. is all brand new. So, so you're saying I can reach out to people in the agency and I can see if I can find a coach or mentor out of the group or who would want to possibly I, mentor me or coach me because right now I'm the little fish in this big pond this big ocean well and the, I've been just trying to connect with people so so you're you're kind of like the lone ranger right um you're the lone yes. ranger out there except there's no Tonto anywhere around to be found he he left he's gone and so you're, you're, <laughs> you know, you're all alone. And so Kara, uh, what I will say to you, if you're accepting it, I will reach out to you. Uh, I'll do it this week so we can connect. Okay. So I don't want you okay. to be without an accountability partner. I want to be that person for you. Um, I want to be okay. that person for all of you, if you want me to be, and don't get, don't get caught up in titles, accountability partner. Um, Jerry and I, for instance, talk often, and sometimes it has nothing to do with real estate. It, it, it has no. nothing to do with real estate, but it has everything to do with real estate. It, it's just, you know, we'll connect and we'll talk as hopefully friends. And um, I, I would like to think, and I think the goal for Paul in this office and for all exit offices is that our culture is such that we can all trust to be able to call anybody in our office. Some people are more giving than others. Some people are busy, but we should be an office, at least I, the office that I built, um, tried to build was one where we could call anybody at any time, you know, within reasonable time. And, and we were all there to give. That was one of the things when I interviewed office to come into my office, I asked them, you know, it's, it's not just about me giving to you, right? You're here because you want to know right. about Exit Realty Ben that, that, in my office in Oregon. You want to know about, so here's what we got. Now, what I want to know is what are you going to give us? What do you bring to the table? Because you're a valuable human being. So what is it that you're going to be able to bring? And we expect you to be part of a loving family to work together. So Kara, what I would say is we're all here to help you. I would like to be your accountability partner to help you okay. with that. Okay. And so you Cortez, same thing. Of course, I picked the worst time to go on a, you know, a vacation thing. Uh, the clock just works that way because I'm working with L2 and then there's things that get in the way. I will reach out to you. So what I would recommend is that the people that are on the screen, 
for the most part, these are the people that can be here today. People that aren't here aren't bad or any of that. They've got other things. Some people just don't want to be here, and that's okay. That's their choice. But for the people that are here, um, be present. They're, you guys are present and um, rely on each other because we're here. That's a culture. Having the, uh, the meeting that we had two days ago in our Grapevine office, you know, COVID separated us. And what we're trying to do is bring us together. We're spread out all over it. Do you, have, you know, the Metroplex, we're spread out all over the place, but we need to bring more of the human element in it if you want it. So Kara, I will reach out to you. Cortez, the same L I know we need to, uh, we had an interruption last week. Kim, you, you need to reconnect with me if you want or, or anybody. And the same with Mike and, and Paul, we're here to help each other, okay? All right, so let's move on and let's get into, um, if I'm able to share my screen, hopefully you're able to see my screen. W last week, I, I, the one thing that I kind of messed up is I had reduced this. This was, as you can see on the screen, a five-week mastermind. I moved it into a four-week mastermind. So it means that things were time different and what we covered in chapters so forth are, are a little different. So today uh, on... Number two, we're going to talk about chapter three because we missed it. I, I thought we were going to do one, two, three last week, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. The fact is, we don't need to do 12. Okay, 12 is kind of a, a, a review, and there's some tools in the book. I don't know if you've gone back there yet, but if you look in 12, these are all going to make sense. They're tools that you can use in your business. They're called references, guides, and templates. So we're not going to study that in a week. So today we're going to talk um, about three, four, uh, three, four, five. You've already reached out to six. That's okay. Next week we'll do six, seven, eight, and uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, the fourth week. All right. Just read three chapters every week. You'll be ahead. Uh, remember that this is what a mastermind group. We're focused people. We're trying to solve problems to help each other grow. The one-time experience where we're reading this book and, and we're growing. So what, what Shelly talked about in chapter three that we didn't cover last week because it was so wonderful having her there and it took a little bit of time and I'm so glad she gave to us because uh, she's so extraordinary, is showing up. And so she talked in the book in chapter three on pages 34 and 35, if you've got the book next to you and you want to look at it and kind of reflect on it, maybe um, you want to highlight something. But she talked about the hesitation. Hesitation is your worst enemy. Hesitation, Kara, you mentioned fear, I believe. You talked about fear. Hesitation and fear are two of the biggest enemies in our business. As a matter of fact, fear is so, for me, Fear is something that has consumed me for my entire life. Fear that I was going to be found out, that people are going to discover that I'm an imposter, that I'm not really good at what I do, but I'm faking it uh, until I'm making it. One of, that's one of my fears. And, and fear for a lot of people and hesitation have to do with not doing things because you're fearful. As a matter of fact, um, when I went to, uh, when I, well, I'm here in Iowa again, but when I was here three months ago, I came here to talk to the Iowa Police Chiefs Association about fear and about how fear can stop you in what you're doing. And, and so I, I talk about the book Failing Forward by John Maxwell. And the, the one thing that's extraordinary to me, and it always has been, is we're all taught how to succeed. What we're doing now and for the next couple of weeks, we're talking about here's the things you need to do to succeed. That's what we're doing, right? But the one thing we don't have time for is talking about what if we don't? What if we fail at something? No one ever teaches us how to face fear. And so in this part, she talks about the hesitation. How can be your worst enemy? By you're feeling discomfort and making a call. We're never prepared, right? Making a call. Kim, I bet when you were making a call for this client that you had that didn't even look at the property and wanted to make an offer, talk about fear and anxiety. Well, I don't know about you. 
may be you're confident enough or too new to have fear about what you were doing, but it's a fearful thing that for a lot of people and a lot of people would hesitate in even making a call in moving forward on calling the list, on knocking the doors that you have to do, on going to the Chamber of Commerce meeting, on going to the church meeting or the school board, places where you can meet people, we have discomfort and fear and anxiety were running circles around Shelly. Now she broke out of it and it's, it's not easy, but I wish we spent more time on how to fail forward because we all fail. I mean, if you look at the lives of some of the most uh, creative uh, Nobel Peace Prize winners, all, they failed so many times before they were successful. They just faced their fear. She chose baby steps. Just call and make the appointment. I would suggest that you adopt the word baby steps in your business. So tomorrow from 11 to noon, you're going to take the baby steps to call five people. And what five people are you going to call? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But you can start with, your, uh, with the people that you know with your sphere of influence, just do it. Take baby steps. If five is too many, call one, five a week, one a day. Just make the call, try to make conversation, try to get past the small talk, You know, be involved in their life, be interested in them. Think about baby steps in your business. Baby steps might be knocking doors, something that I teach where you know you can choose the number of doors you go to each day or each week or each month okay there's things that we can do so let's just move real quick her first sign call she talked about and how she prepared and her motto is show up on time prepared you guys i think one of the best things you can do is to always be on time one of the things I did, I've told several of you, in, in, when I was in, in the business of really doing the business, when I showed up for an appointment, I'm so anal. And on time to me meant that if it was an 11 o'clock appointment to do a listing presentation, that I had my watch at that time, that is, you know, before these things, I, and I would have my watch that I was made sure that was set correctly. And when it was 10 seconds to 11, if my appointment was left, I would ring the doorbell. I wanted to be so on time that people never would question whether I was on time or not. Okay. So as uh, when you're be prepared, show up on time, prepared. Remember clients work with agents they know, like, and trust. So again, your sphere of influence should include, they're not clients yet, but should include the people that you know, like, and trust. So this weekend, what am I doing? I'm going to a 50-year class reunion. And you know, part of the reason I'm here, it's to connect with people that are the same age of me, that may be looking to sell and downsize. This may sound crazy to you. Everything is in business, but it, it's an opportunity for me to touch base with a bunch of old fogies like me that are 68 years old, that if they haven't, may be thinking about selling their home and downsizing. I want to connect with all of them. And trust me, they will all know that I can help them with any real estate needs that they have and that I will reach out to them to let them know through some systems that Exit has that they can search for any price on any property in the United States. And I want to be the connector. I want to be the person to connect them when they go to move or their kids go to move. So I'm going to be planting seeds. I don't know how many classmates will be there, but my goal is 10, is to connect with 10 people, to get 10 people's definite contact, make sure that they're on my mailing list and that I can do business with them if they choose to work with me. Because I think there will be those at my class reunion who know me, like me, and trust me. And there will be those that know me, but they don't like me and they may not trust me. And that's okay. You find the people that you can work with. 
Um, so she talked about her first contract. I thought that was a fun part of the story, page 39, where she had never written a contract. And it took her four hours to write her first contract. I don't think that's foreign to anybody that's written a contract here in, 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 this, uh, in this meeting. I, I know when I came to Texas, first contract that I wrote, I didn't know the Texas contract. I still am not very confident about the Texas contracts. I need to continually work on that. But she spent four hours uh, working uh, on her first contract. So know that you're not failing if it takes four or six or eight hours, that that's part of the business. And uh, she knew who she could help and or she reached out to who would help her. So you guys, you got people that can help you. My expertise is not in Texas contracts. That is not my expertise. I can help you with that, but we all have things that we work with. So you've got help here. This is not um, a place like EXP where it's going to be hard to connect with anybody or an office where um, you have no one to reach out to. Okay, so first client thoughts, the energy you show up with is the energy you attract back. It sounds so simple but mirroring other people, talking in the same kind of the same kind of speed that they're talking with. When you show up with energy and you're excited about it, whether you're here or whether you're anywhere, you attract people back. I'm guessing there's, you know, there's eight or nine of us here, whatever, but there's somebody that has spoken here today that might have connected with some energy that somebody else that's here might connect with. You know, we're talking about Kara whether it's Haley or Paul or anybody to connect with the energy you show up with, you attract back. And with Shelly, she has an amazing amount of energy, but she has an amazing amount of confidence. That's the one thing that she has. The only way you get it is by working on the business. She talked about working open houses. I liked her approach. So make sure if you don't know how to do open houses, there are many ways to do that. Actually, in a Tom Ferry class, we teach how to do mega open houses and so forth, which we'll be doing again. But work uh, open houses like a catwalk in a fashion show. She begged other agents for open houses. Listen, if there's agents in our office, which is like every other office, who have those people that are listing heroes. Okay, we got them in our office. We got a couple for sure that seem to do all the listings because they're really good at it. They probably weren't good at it at first, but they are now. When they offer open houses, if it's in your plan, my plan was every third and fourth weekend of every single month, I was going to do an open house. It was on my calendar. I had no choice. I needed to make sure. And, and when I had the third and fourth weekend, I was sure that I had planned it accordingly, all my advertising, all my, everything was put into those three and four weeks. So I just didn't show up and spend time watching the NFL on a Sunday afternoon in somebody else's house. Uh, the fact is they don't have as good a treats as I have at my place. And I don't feel comfortable going to the refrigerator to eat like I do at my house. And so beg for open house. You don't have to beg, ask, volunteer. Um, she used the kitchen as her office. I found that interesting, uh, but that was her hangout place because people will usually come back to an area of the house when they're doing an open, when they go to an open house and it's usually the kitchen. That's what she found. She always had a sign-up sheet that says pre-COVID. She's back to sign-in sheets. There are also things that you can get on the internet with apps where people can sign in on an app so you can automatically record them and automatically send more information to them and put them into a CRM system. Um, she talked about a 15 second conversation. So figure out what your 15 second, 15 second conversation is gonna be with somebody that comes to your open house. It's perhaps your elevator speech. What is it that you want to say in that 15 seconds, you might distribute or exchange or give them a business card you might uh, give them a list of actives and pendings and solds. You better know them for the area that you're in, absolutely sure, for the county, for the city, for the neighborhood, for the subdivision. You better know those numbers and provide them with that so they can see right off the bat, man, this person really knows what they're doing, even when you feel that you don't know what you're doing. Sherry talked about the follow-up. 
She says, follow up on everything, all day, every day. She talked about the gutter guy. She talked about your job to capitalize on every opportunity uh, with the goals. You can read this. I'm not going to read to you. We spent a lot of great time in conversation. So we're running through this. Just want to touch on the things that were important to me. Staying safe is another one. I don't know if anything's ever been taught at our office about it, um, but it's very important that you're always safe. And it's not just for women. Women uh, obviously are subject to maybe worse things than men, but there are people that will harm anybody anytime. And so when you do open houses, make sure you're safe and learn about how you can be safe. Um, learn how to defend yourself and so forth. Um, so in part of this chapter, she talked about dressing the part. Um, decide what your dress is going to be. I always dressed for the occasion that I was going to. If I was going to show a farmer 100 acres of land, I didn't dress like a farmer, but I dressed down. I didn't wear my suit and tie. I dressed to that level. Decide what your dress is going to be. And I suggest that it be more than sandals with, you know, your feet showing uh, in shorts with, you know, your battered legs showing, whatever it might be, um, unshaven, unprepared, whatever your deal is that you're always trimmed, uh, you're always ready to do business. Um, perception is nine tenths of the truth. So follow up, stay safe. Chapter four, she talked about her databases and um, the rule, uh, what rules them all. I'm choking to death because my throat's so dry. But the people she knows, her sphere of influence, that was her database. We have a CRM called Boomtown. Boomtown. You've got to use Boomtown, you guys. It's a CRM. Um, if you want leads, the, the only way you're going to get leads is if you if you move your level up to where Paul feels comfortable in giving leads to, to you. You have to be all in in order to get leads. But for her, it was the power of meeting people. She had 16 people, and, but her goal was to meet two people every week for coffee, happy hour, dinner, whatever it might be. There's a lot of people to meet. And by connecting with them is how you're going to grow your sphere. She fo focused on people knowing her. Her 34 minutes on focusing on how she would build rapport. If you didn't read it, make sure you read that part of the book, okay? Um, when you're open for something or someone to come into your life, um, it, it just, they have a habit of appearing. I just listened to a webinar yesterday that there's so much energy in the world that when you focus on good things, good things are going to happen. If you focus on how terrible things are, it's likely that that's going to follow you. Then this, she talked about writing 350 notes a year to the same people at the same time of the year. So read that part of the book, personal notes. You guys, one of the secrets in this business is writing personal notes. We don't do it enough, but people love to get personal notes. If you wrote a personal note today to someone who's not expecting it, but the note is just simple, I was, I was thinking about you today. I hope you and your family are doing fantastic. I'd love to connect and have and have coffee with you in the future. It, it could the note can be about anything, but it's showing genuine concern, love, care, friendship. The business comes from can come from that. So personal notes are huge. So in my business, I would send out tried to send out, I shouldn't say try, because either you do it or you don't if it's on your calendar. It, but I did three notes a day. And that takes time. You have to get the envelope, you have to stamp it, you have to write out the address, then you have to figure out what's in the note. Think of how people would learn more about you when you, if you sent them handwritten notes and remember you. When was the last time you received a handwritten note? When was the last time? You may not even be able to remember, but it's important. It's a connection tool, and, and it's, a, it's a right connection point for all of us. Um, a digital newsletter. We have it on Promo Shop, you guys. The pop by. That's a Brian Buffini thing. Just walk into an office of somebody that you know and say, hey, I just stopped by. 
because I was thinking of you today. How is your business? And is there anything I can do to help you? Whatever it might be. You guys, the personal notes, I think I even asked you last week, send a personal note to Shelly Zavitz. Okay, you can find her on the internet. Okay, she's easy to find. Send her a personal note. Tell her how inspiring she was to you, if she was. Here's, and here's the reason. First of all, it's a right thing to do. She gave us her time. It cost us nothing. She did this for you guys. She didn't have to. She doesn't, never has to do it again. I bet if I asked her to come back, she would. But if you send her a personal note, wouldn't you like to be the person that she might connect with here in Texas when she has a client moving to Fort Worth, when she has one moving to Grapevine or wherever you might live? You, you want to plant the seed so, so she can help you if you help yourself. So write her a personal note today. This gal connects with a heck of a lot of people. And it's very likely that she's going to send people that are moving from Portland to Texas. You want to be the person that she thinks about. And you can send a personal note thanking her and say, listen, by the way, connecting is so important to me. I'm so glad that we connected in a small way. I'd love to connect with you again. And by the way, if you know of anybody moving to this area, just know I'm here to help them, whether they're looking to buy, sell, rent, whatever it might be, or just want to know more about the area, I would love to help them. Be genuine in what you do. Getting business from your database. Know your connectors, and you've got to work your database. Okay. Chapter five, the power of yes. She said yes to virtually everything. Here's her yes rule. I have no sphere. She was starting out. Remember, she knew three people. Therefore, I must grind out every transaction. I will say yes to literally everything that comes my way. I will dive head first down every rabbit hole and create the business I need to succeed. Man, what, what a great way to live. I don't believe in saying yes to everything. I just believe in saying yes to those things that are important to you and can help you build your business. She talked about the success she had from answering the exhausted call. Okay. Um, you can read about that as well. Yes is a powerful word. Here's what she said. This is her quote, I believe. I think it's hers. Yeah. If you believe in what you're doing, believe in your business plan. You got to have a business plan before you can believe in it. I can help you with that. And decide that there is no way you are going to let anyone, including your exhausted self, get in the way. You will succeed, but you can't stop. My challenge to you is to do every single thing you are invited to do. Go to the class. A colleague thinks will be great for you. I know Kim has done this. Kim goes to a lot of classes, a lot of things where she's trying to gain more knowledge. She when she's invited somewhere, um, I just speak to Kim more than, uh, I don't know about the others of you, but she'll go because she wants to connect with people. Even if you think you know what the class will teach, you already, that you already know, go for coffee with the financial guy. Your lender wants to meet you. Go for the drink at happy hour, even though you are exhausted, just go. I know Mike goes to places at the end of the day sometimes where um, beverages are available and he'll connect with people that are in the room and has made wonderful connections that way. Am I right, Mike? You've made some great connections in doing that. I have, yeah. Actually, yeah. one of them wants to come speak in our office. He's a roofer. <laughs> sure. So he, he wants, you know, he wants something from the relationship you want something, but you know what? Maybe he's offered, he's able to offer us something that we need and we don't have. And so I think that's great to make those connections. So go for the drink at happy hour, even though you're exhausted at the end of the day. Okay. And finally, there's opportunities and there's open doors everywhere. You've got to make the cold call. When you don't want to call somebody that you think is cold, reach out a helping hand reach out, um, you know, a, a helping hand that where people can trust you, that it's not about the sale, it's about the connection, the sale will come. And yes, I will walk up to somebody's door. I did door knocking 
with Kim and with Mike and Tom was with us and Kimberly came with us. I'm probably forgetting somebody that was with us, but was it hard? Was it hard walking up to someone's door that we didn't know? That's a cold call. That's walking up to somebody's personal, personal residence, knocking on their personal door. When they open the door, they didn't invite you there, but you want to make sure that you have something to give them that's of value. And we do. We just don't. We take ourselves for granted. We have so much to offer people. We have things to offer people that they don't even know. How about what we just learned on Tuesday? <laughs> do we have something that could help people who think that their home might not sell or that there's only one way to sell a home? Do you think that that plan might help people? So yes, I will market myself confidently. You got to believe in yourself and you got to market yourself conf uh, confidently. And the opportunity is the payment. So your final thoughts uh, from what we covered today, we just got a minute or two to talk, but any, any thoughts from what we talked about today? I'd love to hear your thoughts from the day. I have a thought. Yes. So you said, yeah, I do go to a lot of things. And yesterday I went to something, I went to a network thing. I got home, I was like, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be tired of well, I'm gonna go. But going back a couple months ago, about February to March, I went to a mastermind. I've, I've mentioned her name before. It was Deanna Morgan. And that's where I met Al at. And Al's on the phone. I mean, on, on here today. And, you know, without you, that, you don't realize yeah, he wouldn't huh? have been here. He wouldn't have been here if you wouldn't have. Correct. Met. <laughs> but it's been constant contact. Um, he's helped me. I've helped him. And in general, it's just a friendship is formed because you don't know who you're going to meet and who's going to come into your life how it's going to affect you, them, and everybody else. I mean, and it wasn't, I mean, I didn't, you don't know me, I love exit, but, you know, it was either helping him or him helping me or in general, but you learn together, you work together, and I just, you never know. So I think it's important to network. And maybe I do it a little too much, but this is relationships, and you don't have to be cutthroat in this business. You don't have to hide your knowledge that you know, you know, so yeah. anyway. Yeah. I'm glad Al's here today. Yeah. And everybody else too. Yeah, I am too. I am too. Thank you. I got something to say about it. Go ahead, Al. Um, I don't know how many people actually know, but I'm I'm not with Exit yet. I will be soon. Um, just waiting for a transaction to be done and then I'll be over. But for Kim, I thank her a lot because I would have never met Jim. Jim is even though I'm not with Exit he's he's coaching me um and then today the biggest thing that i've taken um uh, and noticed that not only is hesitation one of my worst enemies but i also know that fear is a liar so um i take those two statements and i try to implement them into me to be able to move forward and do the things that i fear yeah yeah and we and we all fail there's fear there's failure, but there's a there's an upside to it. There's an upside. You got to face that fear. You got to face it. Hey Jim, can I make a comment uh, sure. that I think might sort of put a bow on a lot of this and and uh, help send it home? Um, all this information is wonderful, as has been all the information that we keep putting out week after week, and yet the actualizing that information and taking it from knowing to doing continues to be somewhat of a dilemma. And sometimes it's hard because we, we, we see these things, these steps that Shelley's outlined, they make perfect sense and, and they're all manageable. Yet many of us, we don't do it and we don't understand why we don't do it or more realistically, all of us probably do it or we, we take attempts, but we don't do it on a sustainable basis. And uh, we'll be on a track and something will knock us off. And if I'm speaking to anybody that doesn't feel that, then please feel free to disagree with me. But having coached and been at this for 39 years, I've seen this time and time again. And uh, something was shared with me. And when I thought about it, it, it made perfect sense. And it was easy to relate to. And, and I said, you know, when 
somebody came up with the idea of building an automobile, uh, there were a lot of steps involved in doing it. And, and you could have people that understand all the different components of that, but yet people weren't efficiently building automobiles. And, and Henry Ford thought about this and he said, you know, if I broke this, if I broke this into steps that didn't really allow failure because each step was prepared and put somebody in a position that they were highly qualified to do something and trained to do it. And it, it wasn't a question of, of deciding what to do. It was really decided for you in form when he created the concept of the assembly line. So if you were putting a door on a car, it wasn't a question of well, what day do I put a door on a car? These doors kept coming to you in a, in a manageable sequence and you attached it to the car and you were trained and you were good at doing that. Um, so what does this have to do with real estate? Well, well think about this. Uh, this is not rocket science. Uh, people that do some of the same things over and over again successfully experience success in this business. Now, there's personal interpretation that you could take it to different degrees, but there's no one in this business that would argue, I don't believe, that to be successful in this business, you have to engage with people. Now, we do it in different ways, but we know that. But sometimes you look at this and, and you're getting a lot of education. I'm not speaking to anybody generally. But yet, if you're not experiencing success, if you're not feeling that progress, ask yourself, do you engage with people? And you can get trained on doing it, but if you don't do it, so how do you take, how do you take the puzzle away so that you put yourself in a position where you will do it? Well, there's tools. Jim's presented this. Shelly's presented this. You have a schedule. You, you schedule time and you show up. And then within that time, you take those baby steps. But, you know, the idea here is you don't allow yourself to be in a position where you don't take action. You, you turn your business into a Henry Ford assembly line concept. And that's, that's why we've talked about, for example, we've talked about block scheduling. If you know that every day at nine o'clock to 10 o'clock, you're going to make phone calls. Now, Henry Ford wouldn't allow you to show up the assembly line and not deliver the door that you're supposed to attach to the car. Well, how do you turn that into a real estate business? Well, you, you, you develop your sphere during a different time period and you queue up those calls. Brian Buffini does it in his software. When it's your time to call, those names just come to you. You don't even have to think about it. But Brian Buffini didn't come up with those names. You did because you put it into a database, which was another piece of the puzzle. But the point is there was a time, it was nine o'clock to 10 o'clock in my example, where you made phone calls. And taking a Henry Ford approach, you did all the pre-work so that those calls were queued up to you. And if you didn't know what to say during a different period of time, you worked on that, those baby steps. Well, what do I say? And you've got Jim here, you've got me, you've got Mike, you've got YouTube, you've got Brian Buffini, you've got Tom Ferry. There's no lack of accessibility as to what to say. How do you get over the fear? Well, you show up on a scheduled basis doing the things that you know will lead to success. And everything that's in Shelley's book, everything that Jim's been teaching, everything that I've tried to coach over the years really can be broken down into a handful of things. And they're not that complicated. You know, everybody says, well, how is Boo so successful besides his tenacity? One hour every day he's on social media and he's not just posting things to post them. He's posting things to cause conversation and he's engaging people. And the minute he has that engagement, He's ruthless with his follow-up. Yeah. And that's his secret. But it's an assembly line for Boo. There's a scheduled time that he does it. Now he's so overwhelmed with so many clients, but he built that database of people that know him. So my takeaway on top of everything that Jim's talked about this is that you can break your business down into an assembly line. And you can put yourself into that position where the doors are coming to you and you're just attaching them. That's called a schedule. And you can plan this out and not over plan it. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to sabotage yourself for failure to succeed because you don't take the steps to plan it, to organize it, to schedule it, to hold yourself accountable using all these beautiful tools and ideas and suggestions that have been come here. And we sabotage our success because we don't hold ourselves accountable to doing the basics. And really, there's only two or three things you have to do here. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll stop talking, but uh, 
I, yeah. I just know knowing is not doing. And, and exactly, Paul. And just to end things, I just want to tell you about um, my uh, my nephew. I'm here in Iowa. My sister's son is a uh, just became a, passed his bar is a, an attorney working for a corporate firm in uh, Massachusetts, a huge corporate firm. And I just want you guys to reflect on this for a second, because we have to be accountable to us because this is our business, okay? We have to have our schedule, our time clock. We have to do that. Let me tell you about his corporate thing in just a couple seconds. He has to, by the way, his corporate firm charges $2,000 an hour for their fees for being attorneys, $2,000 an hour. He has to have an accountability book of what he's doing every six minutes. I couldn't live with that, right? We have freedom and flexibility in real estate, but we have so much flexibility that we don't even do it for a day, let alone every six minutes. So at the end of the day, he has to give a report to you know, the principals of this firm what he was doing every six minutes of the day. That seems pretty crazy, but some people have it down on how they get people um, accountable in their business and productive. And I'm not saying you need to do it every six minutes, but you, I, I know in talking to people that are successful, they all have the same thing. They all, they all use a calendar. They all use time blocking. Okay. Last thing. So next week we are doing chapter six, seven, eight. Uh, we talked a little bit about chapter six, which is the F word. Everybody know what the F word is? Mm, dirty minds. It's fear. Okay. So it's fear. And we're going to talk in chapter seven about mindset and chapter eight about ego. Okay. We're going to talk about ego and those things and mindset and ego go a lot together. So I hope you're with me next week. Uh, I will be somewhere. I think I'm going to be in Minnesota next week, but I'm going to be here um, and reach out to each other. You guys love on each other, help each other and think about somebody in our office, maybe that isn't even here and tell them why they should have been here and how you learned one thing today that might have helped them or that they can see in a recording because I'm going to record this one, put it on YouTube and then put it back, even though it was a little late in recording and put it back into our site. Okay. So I love you guys. I appreciate you being here and we'll talk very soon, huh? Safe travels. Take care. care. See ya. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jim. Yep. Bye everyone.